Hello everyone. My name is Maria Schoenenberger and welcome to Lampwork Glass Beads, the Le Pote Way. I've been a Lampwork Glass Bead artist since 2003, making beautiful little baubles like these out of glass. I've owned a studio, I've taught a lot of students, and I wanted to put this free video out there for all of you because in my last class I forgot one. Oh. <laughs> so what happens when I forget to give you guys a bead in class? You get a free class. So this is transparent triangles. I hope you enjoy it. I'm sorry I forgot about it before, but we're going to tackle it now and you get to tackle it for free. So buckle up, let's go and let's make some beads. As far as the class syllabus goes, uh, there's not that much to it. We're going to start out with a little review of the colors we're going to use today, which are a fetre pea green and some transparent teal. And then once we review the colors, I have a few tidbits of information to share with you guys with regards to rods of glass. After we do that, we are going to hand pull some stringers because I think it's important to always review the basics. So we're going to pull these little stringers. I'm going to do a review of how to do that. And then we're going to jump right into it and make some beads. So these are the finished beads that we're going to make. Um, I'm going to do a review of how to make puckered holes in your round beads. And then these are donut shaped beads. So we're going to make that base bead. We're going to walk all the way through it. Then we're going to put down all the dots and melt them in. And I'm going to talk a lot. And yeah, then we'll wrap it up. So these are the beads we're making today. Now, as far as prerequisites go, this class is designed for everyone. So whether you're working on a surface mix torch like this miner, or you're working on a hothead torch or a fireworks torch attached to a map canister, this class is for all of you. The techniques and the processes and the tips um, work on both torches. So everyone is welcomed. Now, regarding other prerequisites, you guys should all have basic knowledge of the safety um, precautions that we use in lamp work, uh, torch safety, some glass handling skills, of course, proper ventilation, and your didymium glasses are going to be required to safely make this speed. And I would recommend that you guys check out the Glass Speed 101 class that I did recently. It's not an absolute requirement that you take that class before this one, but all of the bead shapes that I made in that class, we're going to use them in this class. So it's probably a good idea to have some knowledge of those bead shapes. Now, all of the materials and tools are available through your suppliers and your distributors. And as far as tools go, we're going to need an X-Acto knife. <laughs> but I will give you a little list of tools that we're going to use in each section. I don't think it's that big. I think we need just a marver and an X-Acto knife, and we'll be in good shape. I also highly recommend a kiln to properly anneal your glass. And um, I went over that in the Glass Beads 101 class. So check that out, but not a big deal as far as prerequisites go. Okay, let's get started. Our colors for today, I'm going to make the base bead out of this pea green, and then we're going to make some of the dots out of this dark teal. Now, I wanted to kind of um, take this opportunity, because it showed up, 
in my glass rack. You can see here how this pea green, it's got a whole bunch of different diameters. Now these two right here on the left, those are actual rods. And if I can kind of tweak them a bit, you can see this rod's a little bit fatter than this rod but they pretty much came in the same batch of glass. So sometimes your rods can be different diameters, maybe off by about a millimeter or so. I like it that way because it gives me different diameters to play with. So these two are rods. Then I have my commercial stringer right here. And then I pulled a hand pulled stringer that's really, really thin. So for this bead, uh, going back to that dot class, it's, it's all about the diameter of the rods. And I'm very happy that I have kind of a mixture here of the different diameters so I can control the volume of glass that I put down in my dots. Now for the dark teal, I didn't have any commercial stringers, um, so we're gonna have to pull some. And why not? Let's review pulling stringers. All right, Torturuni is on, camera is adjusted. And now I'm heating up that dark, um, transparent teal. And one of the things I think to keep in mind, like all this glass, it all has its own personalities and little quirks. And what you'll find with the transparent glass is that it's a lot stiffer than the opaques. And sometimes I find that the stiffer glass is a little more shocky than the, trans, uh, than the opaques. And so you wanna take your time when you're heating up the transparents. And it does take a little longer, it seems, to heat them up and to get them to melt down. So, you know, just be aware of that. And as you go on your glass journey, you will find that different glass has different personalities. And it's okay, because it's good to learn how to work with all of them. All right, so there's my little pea size gather on my transparent rod, and I'm gonna pull it out of the flame and let it cool a bit, and then just grab a little nubby right here with my tweezers and give it a pull, and oh my God, I can totally tell that that glass is stiffer. And there you go. That is our transparent stringer. Set it on your rack so it cools, and then be sure that you melt down your rod so that it has a nubby not a sharp point because i just had to dig out a sliver of glass out of my finger the other day because i didn't practice what i preach so what did mom used to say do what i say not what i do <laughs> oh i need a t-shirt that says that okay now i've got my little pea green glass here and I'm just going to heat it up and pull a stringer from it too. And I know it's hard to see like on camera, but this pea green is melting a lot faster and it just feels more, more buttery. Is that really correct to say that? It's more buttery. All right, there's my pea size gather. I'm going to pull it out and I'm still spinning the rod around so that it doesn't drop off and droop onto my workbench. And here we go, pull, 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 pull. I'm gonna get a long skinny one out of this. Oh, that should be enough glass, huh? Okay, put the stringer down. Let me melt this into a nubby. Oh, caca. Let me melt this into a nubby and I'll be right back to get started on the bead. And we're off. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make this bead from the very, very beginning because it's always good to review, right? So I've got my pea green. I've got a little gather on it. I'm gonna go ahead and make that first wrap. And I'm being very slow and deliberate so that I can line up those left edges all aligned with each other. And the reason we're doing that is because we want that puckered hole. 
So the first wrap doesn't have to be big. The most important part is getting those edges lined up with each other. Then I'm going to go ahead and put a little wrap in the center. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the right size wrap. Again, I want puckered holes, so I have to line up those right edges. And if your glass thins out a bit, that's okay. Just make sure those edges are lined up. And that looks good. So now you can start laying down all the other layers. So this is the second wrap on the left, second wrap in the center, and the second wrap on the right, lining up those right edges. And you can see my flame is on the elbow right there. You can see that elbow. And that's where I heat my glass up. Okay, coming around for the third wrap. Just filling it in. Right now, I just want to get material down. I think I'm going to make this like a four, a four-layer donut. Ooh, that sounds good, huh? A four-layer donut. Everything I do revolves around food. <laughs> Okay, there's the third layer. Kind of my tire. Now let's do the fourth. And we're coming around the bend here. And in the center. Now I got a little bit of area here that I didn't fill in. Just fill it in with a little bit of glass. It's all about laying down the material right now. We got to have something to work with on this speed. Okay, and there's a big space there that I'm just going to fill in. All right, good. Now we start the rotations. And what's going to happen is the speed, it's going to fatten out a little more, a little more inner tube shape than tire shape. And that's good because that's what's going to um, help make those puckered holes kind of suck in towards the center of the mandrel. And it'll also give us good surface area to work with. So just slowly spinning it. If things get a little too soupy or out of control, just move it out of the flame, but keep rotating it. And it will start to puff out, puff up, puff out, and just, just, you're practicing right now, you're practicing heat control and you're practicing gravity control. And you never want to let that bead stop moving. And that looks really, really good to me. Oh, I'm happy. I'm a happy girl. All right, let's let it get a little bit of a skin on it, kind of cool down a bit. And now I'm going to take my rod, my fattest rod of that dark teal. And I'm going to slowly heat it up as I keep my bead warm in the back of the flame. Heating up that teal and we're going to lay down the first dot. And that first dot is going to go on the side of this tire. Right about there. And it's a pretty substantial size dot. Okay, let's let it cool a bit. Now, I'm going to use that right angle method for putting down the second dot. So there's my first teal dot facing straight up and down. Now I'm going to turn it to the side and put the second dot 90 degrees from the first. All right, now let's go for that third dot. I'm letting the second one cool a bit. Okay, now the second one is facing straight up and down. Turn it 90 degrees and put down your third dot. And it's still on the side of that bead. It's not right directly in the center. And now the fourth dot goes right in the middle of the first and the third. And you don't have to use the 90 degree. You, you can just eyeball it. All right, so now once we got those dots down on the right side, 
the left-sided dots go in between the right-sided dots, also kind of on the side of the bead. Kind of on left of center. So there's the first one. There is the second one. And the third one. And the fourth one. This bead's going to be pretty. Just like so. All right, big dots. Now, let's get started melting. And when I'm melting dots like this, I have zero patience. <laughs> I just want things to go fast. So I try to encourage my dots to pancake out and go flat. And the way I do that is with my little press marver here. So I'm going to heat up a dot and I'm going to just gently press it down. Very, very gently, you guys. Loving, calm. You will find with glass that you can't force it to do anything because the minute you force it, there's issues like broken bead release and cattywampus stuff. And it's all, everything we do with this glass is very gentle. Gentle, loving, and tender. And you can talk to your dots as you press them down. Come on, little dot. Become a pancake. Grow, grow up, little dot, and be a pancake. All right, I have got these guys pressed down a bit. And now I'm just going to go ahead and just start spinning my mandrel, melting this stuff down. And since this is super boring, I'm going to turn off my camera and I'll be back when I get these melted down and we'll put in the next layer of dots. So here's that first layer of those teal dots. And um, as you can see, there's a space in between each of them. And that's kind of one of the magics of glass is that as long as you don't touch your initial dots, the space will stay there and they won't run together. You'll always have a space. It's like that light green gra glass pops up through and provides like a barrier, I guess, is the best way to say it. Okay, I have my skinny rod of green, and I'm just laying dots down right in the center of the teal. And this is where it's important to drink your coffee in the morning so you're not shaking or don't drink your coffee in the morning so you're not shaking <laughs> because you want those dots to be right in the center of that teal. And if you don't get them in the center the first time, you can always use your marver to kind of smoosh the glass around so that the bulk of it is in the center. You can always manipulate this material to get it to go where you want but in a gentle way. All right, I'm getting those little green dots smooshed down. And then we're gonna go ahead and we are going to melt them flat, just like this. Now, at, once you smoosh them down, they'll be flat, but then when you start to melt them again, they'll kind of poof up a little bit, but that's okay. The marvering them flat was just kind of to help in the whole melting process and also to get the dots to go where I want them to go. So it's good that it's okay if they poof out again and become dots because they're going to melt down, little suckers. You're going to melt flat. And I apologize if this video gets a little long, but I kind of wanted to just start from the beginning and really show you guys like the whole process here, how long it takes, what you need to do, how I move the glass in and out of the flame, depending on which area needs to be heated and which area is too hot. It's all just practice, technique, and paying attention to the details. And as you go through your lamp work career, you'll start to develop this eye and this feel 
and you'll know, okay, that looks good, that doesn't, a little more heat here, rotate there. It's a process. All right, I like that, so I'm going to pull it out of the heat and let it cool a bit. And now I'm going to take my skinnier rod of that teal, just like we use the skinny rod of the light green, I still think my rods will work on the next layer of dots. So in we go right to the center, laying down a nice teal dot. Not too big, not too small. Again, it's all about just getting an eye and a feel for what you're doing. And you know, you make 10,000 of these and you'll have it all figured out, no problem. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and melt those down. I used to have a diving coach in high school and um, he told us that if you do one dive, you suck. But if you do 10 dives, you're better. And if you do 50 dives, you're okay. And if you do 100 dives, you're really good. And if you do a thousand dives, you're awesome. And getting from one to a thousand was really hard <laughs> and sometimes painful. Okay, there we go. I've got the teal dots down and now I'm going to melt those in. And the good part about this bead is as your dots get smaller, they melt a lot faster. <laughs> And then my OCD and my ADD feels quenched. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is going faster. I don't know why I got into this thing about being so fast. I think my career in like manufacturing engineering messed me up. All right, and right now I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Take your bead out of the flame when you sneeze. <laughs> but keep rotating it so it doesn't droop. <laughs> Just another little trick of the trade <laughs> that I want to share with all of you. <laughs> all right, that's coming around good. I like it. Let's see, we use teal. So now I'm gonna go to my manufactured stringer of my green. And I'm gonna let my bead cool enough that I can see what's going on. And now I'm going to try to get a tinier dot in the center of the teal. Now on this one, I probably should have used my stringer that I pulled, but I didn't. Ah, that looks good. One more, one more. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Oh, this dot looks, this bead looks cool. I love the little, the way that the dots layer and stuff. They almost look 3D. And we're melting those little green ones in. Rotating, rotating, watching them pancake out. And the little teeny tiny dots, I don't feel the need to press them down because they melt so fast. Like the main reason for pressing them down with a marver was just to try to speed up the, the pancake process. But these little teeny beads, they do just great. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna put one more layer of transparent on and it's gonna be a little teeny tiny layer. So I'm letting that bead cool off a bit, mainly so I can see. And here we go. Uh, a little teeny tiny dot there, a little teeny tiny dot there. Oh my God. At some point your dots get so small that you can't see them and you're kind of like, what's the point? So we'll see, we'll see how this bead looks when it's finished. All right, now we got to melt in those little teeny tiny dots. And I think I'm going to call this be done because I don't think I could go any smaller with my dots. <laughs> that last one was so small and I'm not even sure I got it in the center of that opaque green. Okay, let me get this melted out and cooled a bit and I'll show you the final bead. 
And that's it, you guys. That is my layered stacked dots kind of in an offset triangle form. Oh, it looks cute. And I can see that little teeny dot of transparent right in the center. So I'm gonna get this in the kiln and then when it's all kiln annealed and cool, I'll be back. Okay, here's our final dot. And oh my God, that little dot in the middle, the last one I did is so little and cute. Now, you know, I'm looking at this and of course we're an artist and we never like anything that we do. So the second layer here could have probably been a bit bigger because I've got a lot of, of the teal and some areas like right here, the transparent teal didn't come out as defined as I like. Um, but oh my God, that's just being picky. That's me. <laughs> so it's a great bead. I love it. It's very cool looking, psychedelic. Um, here's another one I did of blue earlier, and I think what happened is I used like a dark uh, turquoise on the outer one, but then I used like a lighter turquoise on the center transparents, and so they're not as defined. But that's okay, because they're still great beads. Thanks for hanging out with me, everyone. I hope you had fun. I will be back soon with more videos. Have a great day. Bye. So a lot of people ask me, Maria, what do you do with your beads? And I tell you, I was never really a jewelry person. I just don't wear a whole lot of jewelry. Um, so instead, what I do is I donate my beads to a very wonderful program called Beads of Courage. And it's an arts and medicine program for children who are in the hospital and going through serious medical issues. And what they do is for every needle poke, every x-ray, every inpatient stay, every chemotherapy treatment, the child gets a bead. And they get different kinds of beads and different colors of beads um, according to what they go through. And so at the end of their treatment, oh my God, this little boo-boo, she makes me cry all the time. Look at all the beads. And when you think about all the things that these kids have to go through. It's just a wonderful organization and I am so proud to be part of it. Anyways, Beads of Courage loves getting beads, both lampwork glass beads and polymer clay beads, but they do have a few requirements. So first of all, no things that poke out like these ears. <laughs> They're kind of pokey outy. Um, and the little dot on the nose is kind of not well attached and it kind of pokes out a bit too. Uh, we have to remember when we donate our beads that these kids are going to carry them around in a bag. Um, I know these are strung up. Some kids string their beads, others carry them around in a bag. And, you know, kids will be kids and they drop the bag or they pour their beads out on the floor and play with them. So we don't want anything that's going to pop off or snap off or break. And then they have little sharp pieces of glass. And that's not good. So, yeah, this little guy stays with me because his ears stick out too much. Um, also, here's an example of like a three dimensional where I put these flowers on that... Hmm, I'm not so sure that they're that robust. So when you're making your beads for Beads of Courage, uh, no sticky outy parts. Uh, also, they need to be kiln annealed. They need to be cleaned. And so let me talk to you a little bit about annealing. I have a beast of a kiln. <laughs> it's huge. And I am totally able to anneal beads for those of you who might not have a kiln. So if you want to donate to Beads of Courage and you don't have a kiln, contact me through email or a DM, I think it's direct messaging, um, and let me know that you have some beads to donate but you don't have a kiln. And I'll send you some instructions. Basically what I'm willing to do for you 
and for Beads of Courage. Send me your beads. Send me the Beads of Courage donation form. I will anneal your beads for you, and then I will ship them with my beads to Beads of Courage. And don't worry, I'll keep everything separate in Ziploc bags so Beads of Courage knows that it's you who sent them the beads. So uh, take that into consideration. This is for Beads of Courage donations only. So if you want to do that, let me know. So there you go, you guys. That's my little um, bonus section for Beads of Courage. I know that there's a lot of beginner lamp workers out there who are just starting out. And you might think, oh, my beads aren't good enough. Well, let me tell you, these kids appreciate every bead that they get. And even if your beads are a little lopsided or a little wonky, that's okay because it doesn't take much to make a child smile. So, uh, take that into consideration, donating your beads. Here's a couple more that I did. Make sure that there's no parts that are sticking out. Make sure that the holes are either puckered holes or use your Dremel to grind the holes down kind of smooth because we don't want sharp holes that the little kids might cut their fingers on. And then send them to me if you need them annealed, and I'd be happy to do that for you. These kids, they love every single bead that they get. And so I hope you guys in your lamp work journey will keep Beats of Courage in mind. All right, that's it. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. I'll be back soon with more classes. Bye.